Welcome everybody, I'm Nerders Fred, and today we're going to go and have a look at the Dark Elf campaign in Total War Warhammer 2. Now, we're going to be playing these fairly aggressively. I haven't done this one in a long time, so uh, I don't exactly know what to do straight off the bat. But I will use the principles that we know. Um to try to do the best we can here. Now, the Dark Elves work a little bit differently, but they're still a pretty fun faction, even though it is mostly grayscale, as if you were, you know, the Prester or something. But um, it's all cool. So, Dark Elves gather slaves, basically, for economy purposes. So, uh, you get more money, but you also get more rebellions. Um, you also get Black, Sar Black Arcs. Uh, and... They will run around to try to sail around and uh, sack different cities for, uh, you know, raiding purposes. And Marathi is also spreads, well, Chaos Corruption. So it's a little bit of a different one for her, but I think this one was one of the better tutorial, tutorial factions because you get a monster, you get the basic frontline, backline, and, uh, you know, the monsters. It's all pretty cool. Now. First off the bats, we start off with Ancient City of Quintex. So over here, we're gonna see what other places are in the region. We have Iron Spike and Moon Shard. Now, one of these places needs to fall first. Well, as we can see here, we do not have any enemies over here. Well, not yet anyway. And they actually have, with their little flag here for bleak holes, own all of these things. So what I try to do here is basically take from go over here first, I think, to Iron Spike, and then we can just roll up over here. Chances are, if we don't start in that place, well, on this side, we're gonna have a little bit of a bad time. They can go for us. Otherwise, um, if they come, well, if we go from here, they can attack from there and there. I don't know where their armies are. So starting over here is the best option. Now, when we hold down the mouse button, we can see how much movement range we have on this side right here. We have zero, so we can go over here. But the borders are over there, so we won't be able to recruit in their area. We'll go over here. Oh, oh. Um, okay, we found their army. They have 13 dudes. We have seven. Foolish request. I don't think that's gonna that's gonna work out too well. So I'm actually gonna go back here straight away. Assault these units because they are already taking attrition thanks to the chaos corruption that we're spreading. We failed the assault units. But we will try to get more things here. So instead we'll get one more dread spear and two more dark shards for shooting. Shooting is the best one. Now we also need to research something. We can't research much. But at the start, I'll just go for growth for all cities. Because, you know, the earlier you get that, the faster you can get all your cities up to max, and therefore you can tech better. We're also going to upgrade our military building so we can get masters, we can get, you know, better military. They went for us here, but thanks to us going close to the city, we also get the garrison with us. That works out well. That'll even the playing field quite the best. Earlier, I stopped um, the movements. We were going all the way, but then we just stopped. Just pressing backspace is uh, how you do that. Uh, that one, piggy bank, and ask that in chats. And very good question. To the vengeful slaughter. So backspace is how you do it. May or may not be a bug, so you can do that on, you know. Um, enemy factions as well, boss. That's life. Okay, so their big problems are that they have shades and they have an artillery unit. We're gonna gamble for more Winds of Magic. Winds of Magic is basically just mana.
And we got no more. We're gonna get our reinforcements and garrisons over there. So we could actually go from there as well. We don't have... We don't really want to go from here though. Because a lot of our things won't fight well in the woods. Uh, but I guess we can just fight over here though. Since our deployment circle is the yellow one here. They will deploy in the red one over there. So we will start off with having our spearmen in the front. And we will have our ranged dark shards in the back. We can see here also how far they can shoot. Uh, we'll have our harpies. We'll go over here. And the hydra will go over here. Marathi will stand somewhere here in the middle. And we will select all of them. You can also press Ctrl A and use Alt, left click, drag them. Press Ctrl as well to angle them a little bit. Try to do it like this. Now that we have our garrison, I'm going to take the garrison up here in the front. And we'll have the shards here in the back. Now, notice I have a little bit of gaps here. It's just so that it's easier to shoot them once they actually engage with us. The garrison will be in the front. We'll just put everyone over here. Now we do have swordsmen, we have spearmen, and we have ranged units. The swordsmen and spearmen... Swordsmen are better against infantry, or are supposed to be. Uh, spearmen, better versus, you know, large units like horses. Anything larger than a horse, really. Uh, giants, dragons, hydras, monsters, you know, anything really. Uh, usually they hold the line better, so I usually just go for Spearmen, no matter what faction I'm playing. I almost never go for Swordsmen. Very rarely, so as a rule you can just go for the one with the highest melee defense. Now you see melee defense on this little side right here. If you don't have this one, you just press I and you get this one up. You can always see melee defense and armor, for example, what's a good front line. A lot of Total War Warhammer 2. It's about ranged DPS, and ranged damage. Not with all factions, because some factions are melee centric, but most of the time, ranged will do most of the damage. Let's get in here. We're actually gonna take the Hydra over here on the flank, because the Hydra has fiery breath right here. And now, they have started using their artillery on us. So I'm just gonna try to serpentine as well as I can. And we found the shades. The shades do a lot of damage. They have a really good um, crossbows there. Mother of the now notice the only ones I actually have on control groups are the large units and the things that will actually require the most micromanagement. Now, this micromanagement might not be perfect, but it will do. Okay, now we actually got the harpies here in the back. So we're going to take them over there, and then we're going to press shift, and we're going to link that one. So they'll go first over there, so they get away from the shades. Maybe the shades will forget about them, and then they'll go for the artillery. Now, as we can see here, we have combat in full going. And these things are all shooting. Marathi has uh, close to no uh, actual spells here. She does have one spell that will actually do damage. So we'll just use Melkos Mysma as much as we can. And we'll also go for their general, as you can see here with the little um, 
star up front. If you don't have all of these symbols over, you can also hold spacebar. And they're over here, and you should have hide foliage, unit icons, unit stat bars, and unit status icons this is what I use, and have them all on toggles always show. Okay. Okay, the harpies went for those, but I think the shades are gonna murder them. And here we go with a pretty big... Fire breath here, maybe? Yes. And then we'll just take it in there because it does a lot of terror. Seeing that thing is terrifying. I mean, if I were there, I would definitely be happy that that thing was on my side. Very happy. But it seems like we're breaking this flank right here. And we're going... To the next one as well. Now we are sweeping it up. Like we're rolling up a carpet. And these guys aren't shooting on these anymore. So we will move them up. So that they are angled as well on the rest. So they can continue being somewhat effective. By somewhat I mean. I mean like doing most of the work honestly. But as a manager you can't you know be too appreciative of them. Or they'll unionize. We'll take the Hydra here. Let's keep on moving with them. But the Hydra will go over here to try to guess another fiery breath over here. Now, as you can see here, the gray little bar is actually their morale. Um, and as you can see here, the little flag means they're running away. The white flag of surrender. Now, the White Flag of Surrender is, uh, you know, a little bit weird because it's one of those, it's just a prank, bro. Basically, they can still come back. They don't really care about, you know, that they try to uh, give up moments before. What you have to do is guess them to get a little skull over their head so that they will not come back. Either by uh, completely trashing them in a fight. Or... Um, by simply making them run away three times. Now we'll take the Hydra. Over to their leader. The Hydra does a lot of damage, so it'll work out pretty well, I think. Hmm. Because their leader doesn't have a lot of anything left at all. See there, they get... Well, not that kind of skull. You'll see when it's actually shattered. Right now they're just broken. But they don't have a lot of health left. Mm. Okay, our dark shards are fighting their shades. It's going so and so. Okay, this woods right here ain't going super well. But as, lo as long as the shades aren't doing anything, that's fine. At least we're keeping them busy. We'll take this one over to uh, them. Yeah, that's the closest one. We can just keep on chasing them around as well. Use the magic here. Damage the Dread Spears a little bit. It doesn't do a lot of... It doesn't get a lot of kills, that spell. But it does do damage, so it's fine. Now, fighting in the woods ain't perfect for us. Uh, the Hydra... Doesn't do super well. In woods, everything large will just be able to hit stuff less. You know, trees are in the way and things like that. Um, so it wasn't perfect, but it did do a lot of kills anyway. It has close to 100 kills, so it's doing all right. Um, now, you can always check here, like in the middle, what unicards are doing anything. If they don't have an icon over them, they're not doing anything. They're just running, which is fine sometimes as well. Okay, that one now has 107 kills. It's going in there. Maybe get a shot off right there. Now, not a perfect fight, but we just need to be in a better spot than they are. See, now we got that one. Now they're shattered. Whenever they're shattered, that means that they're not going to be around for that much longer. Hopefully, anyway. It means that we're 
get into a close to uh, end of the fight here. So we just need to actually, um, you know, get to these dudes. But they are trying to run away. Very likely because of programming and this, you know, general scared of death kind of thing. Okay, they got the the harpies. That's fine. Harpies were just supposed to uh, keep them busy so we could actually get to them to start shooting at them. They only actually lost six dudes so far. It's pretty good by them, I guess. But we have three of our own crossbowmen. These dudes are the upgraded ones. These are tier 3, so they can win um, against one or two, maybe even. If we're unlucky, but uh, not against three. Marathi, my revenge comes in Malakid's name. Red Spears, glorious destruction. Well, lucky us, we were actually um, recruiting before this one. Since we didn't try to run away or anything like that, we'll actually get all the units next turn as well. So we can actually uh, get units next turn as well, and then we'll invade the place to the west. If you think, wow, this is pretty cool that they're just running away, you can just toggle skirmish mode on your ranged units as well. They'll do that basically automatically. Something that some people enjoy and some people don't. At the start, I would actually recommend you to have that on. Uh, we'll try to angle the Hydra here. He's a little bit faster than the other ones, but... Not by much. We can get this one on, off. Good. Now, that's right. Now they lost enough, and the fire, and these guys started shooting, so they actually shattered as well, and we won entire fights. That's all that was needed. We can try to shoot the rest of them as well, have a couple of extra free shots on them, because we will probably have to fight them again after this. Uh, but they will be attrition, and... We won't, we like to be healed. I said we were gonna get an extra few shots in, but... Now that we're all extra running, that was the extra shots that we got in. So once again, I'm NerdRageFred. I usually stream on twitch.tv slash NerdRageFred. I play a lot of Total War games. And today we're doing the tutorial for Marathi, one of the base le uh, leaders for Total War Warhammer 2. Now, now that we've won, we get to choose what we do with the survivors. Well, the ones we captured. Let them go. We can ransom them, get some money. Yeah, we have like 2,000, we're gonna get 1,500 later on. Uh, right now it's like, we can get 800, but we will guess our cash to the race will be a little bit um, worse. And right now I think we need cash to the rate because a lot of our stuff got very hurt. Mercy is a quaint so we're not gonna ransom them away. The money isn't worth it, I think, and replenishment isn't worth it either. We can murder the captives, get recruitment rank, but now we're actually going to just take plus three replenishments and get 65 slaves. Oh, they're completely dead. Cool. Worked out well. As you can see here, we got the dudes that we were recruiting before. We'll move Marathi up here towards Iron Spike. And we will just go for... Two more Spearmen, and one more Dark Shard. Usually the garrison troops, they'll replenish very fast, so you don't have to worry about them. We'll actually also have the Assassin that we tried to use earlier uh, to assault the other ones. Uh, we're actually going to take them to scavenge in the army, so that he will help fighting instead. Because apparently he couldn't do much else anyway. Now we can't reach this place next turn anyway, 
As you can see here, the field of movements doesn't stretch all that way. It does stretch a little bit further this way, though, but that's because, you know, home territory and terrain and stuff. So we can either move 50% of the way. As you can see here, we had 51% here in the back. And then we can actually move to raiding stance. We'll get a little bit of money. We'll get a little bit of slaves as well. So that's all cool. We can get Iron Spike very soon. We can't do much else, so we're just going to take next turn. Slaves will mostly fix themselves. Um, at the start, anyway. I'll show you guys what's, um, what you're supposed to do with them as soon as we get our second region. When Once we united Iron Spike with the next place as well, so we have the three starting places. But now, as you can see, we have a much larger army. They have a small garrison. This is a minor city. You only have one major city per region. And the provinces will just have... No, wait, it's vice versa. It's a province that makes up for a lot of the places. And uh, yeah, so you only have one major city. And the rest will just be minor cities. This is a mi minor city. This actually looks pretty dope. I don't think I've seen this map in a long time. Ah, this is cool. Nice. So here we have a bridge battle. Now, Sun Tzu says you should not cross water or a small bridge like this uh, to find your enemy. You should let them come to you instead, because otherwise you will be at a disadvantage, and that is never worth. Unless they cross to you, you should just leave. Now, Sun Tzu is very correct when he wrote this in The Art of War. They're actually coming over here. The thing is that... Sun Tzu never had a Hydra either, so I mean... Rules do change a little bit, right? He's gonna try to get there. Uh, Black's gonna take the Harpies over there because they're pretty weak. So he's gonna take them on the side instead. The Valiant Chat says, Sun Tzu said, take the high ground. Sun Tzu said to always grab the geograph geographical, geographical, geographical advantage. No matter where that is. If I remember correctly. Now, I haven't read that book in a long time, but I'm fairly sure it's not like that. Okay. So now that we're moving everybody, we have selected everybody. We alt, we held alt and we left click, dragged everybody so they would keep information. And now we have this front line going in there. Uh, the back line is um, going to move like that. Once again, alt, left, click, drag. Take the Hydra here, and we're going to breathe fire right on the front lines here. And most of them probably choose to not be around here. Yeah, there goes the horn of fleeing. Basically, what we do is a kind of weird hammer and anvil kind of tactic. If you guys don't know what a hammer and anvil tactic is, hammer and anvil is supposed to be with cavalry. Um, okay, we're getting the shots in there as well, so we've already won, yeah. Small garrison don't stand much of a chance. Um, you're supposed to have an anvil, a front line, right? Um... That keeps everybody in place. Because not everybody can just run or run away from the front line. Once you engage, if they try to run and you're as fast or faster, you'll just, you know, chase them down and actually kill them. Um, so you try to lock them in with your front line. And then you use cavalry to rear charge. In this game, in one of these formations, everyone takes well, are supposed to fight in the front. That's where you have the shields, for example, so they can block arrows. Um, and that's where they just fight more optimally. If you fight from the side, it will take 25% more damage. And if you uh, fight from the back, they will take 50% more damage because, you know, they get rear charge, for example, by the hammer in the hammer, hammer and animal tactic. So you take the cavalry, you rear charge, and then you wait for about 10 to 15 seconds and you just take those out and you rear charge again. 
So, kind of in the same way, we just lock them in with the front line. And we just use a monster or magic or something like that to just wreck the front line, essentially. It's like a DD and d party where you have a tank, you have a DPS, and you have somebody doing nothing. So, kind of like that. But there are no healers in the Warhammer world, that's why it's Grimdark. Um, so once again, now we'll have post-battle options, see what we're going to do with the actual place, the Saxon Victory. We deployed twice as many as them and absolutely crushed them. So we have Occupy, it's just a little bit less public, uh, well, pro province instability, loot and Occupy. We give, we take, get a little bit of plunder, we get a couple of slaves. Essentially they just kick in the doors, they take whatever there is theirs, and if you fight, you also have to work for them, right? So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna loot and occupy. People will be unhappy about this. Um, but that's life under Druki reign, so it's all fine. We also got Armor Living Death. It is claimed that anyone Wearing this armor cannot die. Unfortunately, they cannot remove it either, and will slowly, and will be slowly driven insane. That's a really good one. Minus leadership, is all right. Uh, leadership is so and so anyway. But otherwise, getting this hunger for regeneration while in melee plus the ward save. Ward save is the best melee stat you can have. It's flat out just, you know, makes things damage you less. It's uh, incredibly good, actually. Armor will reduce some hits. It's essentially like you're, you know, fencing with somebody in armor. Sometimes they'll find ways through the armor. Sometimes they'll have armor piercing things. Um, but most of the time, it will help you quite a bit. Melee defense is basically just dodge. If somebody has a high melee defense, they just won't get hits. Um, and ward save just plain makes things hit you less. Like it's just ten percent less damage essentially, plus the regeneration. So this is uh, this is a great one. You should always say get ward save first. That's like your prior priority. If you can get ward as much ward save as possible, melee defense after that is so good. Um, in Voraki, as chat does ward save work against magic? It works against everything, against everything. So that's why ward save is best. Melee defense is second best. There's also physical resistance, fire resistance, etc. But uh, melee defense, if they're gonna be in melee, is incredibly good. I'm not biased. I just used to be a feral tank in um, Burning Crusade, the World of Warcraft uh, expansion, where you just had like 80% dodge, big health pool, and you could tank anything. Easy peasy. Okay, we managed to guess. These missions, I'm not gonna read the missions too much because the missions kind of go on themselves anyway. But maintain one province. Uh, we're gonna get Moon Shard soon and we'll have that one as well. I am uh, now we also have two skill points. And we're gonna grab Inspiring Presence. And we're also gonna grab Route Marcher for that 10% extra campaign movement range. Now, Morathi is a great uh, sorceress. She's the Hag Sorcerer. Uh, she is the leader called Pleasure, and she is uh, incredibly good at magic and fighting. She's actually one of the one of the best lords in the game, I think. Best hybrid lords. But if you're starting out, I would recommend you to go maybe magic a little bit, or just get a sorcer uh, sorcerer, uh, wizard otherwise. But for now, we're going to go red line. Red line always buffs your army. Blue line buffs, well, everything on the campaign, essentially. You move a little bit further, you get a little bit more uh, loot after battles. Uh, you have to pay upkeep a little bit less uh, to your, well, pay a little bit less salaries um, because you keep them from unionizing and stuff like that, essentially. And then you also have the yellow lines, which are just... 
either magic, you just learn better spells and to be better. You also get greater arcane conduits, one of the best magic things in the game, so always try to get down. You do need to spend a lot of skill points for that though, and you only have to level 40. You can also go with melee. She's incredibly good at melee, getting passive ability enchanting beauty, minus 9 melee attack. Um, melee attack is just how often they hit. And that's coupled with um, Heart Render, her unique sword that you guess later on. You get a quest line when you level up enough. Um, and um, gets minus 9 melee attack again, plus minus melee defense for them as well. So it's um, she's incredibly good in melee as well if you just keep her in melee. But those are the skill lines we have right now. And we also have you know the effects here from... The armor that we found last battle. Um, our assassin also leveled up. Now you can have scavenge, so we get even more post-battle loot. Or you can just make him better in melee. I'm gonna just make him better in melee, because right now we don't really need that money. Now, since we can't move here, the movement bar is, you know, completely empty here. We're just gonna recruit as well. It's gonna take one turn, so we're gonna be able to just move along as per usual. Um, we're gonna guess one dread spear and two dark shards with shields. Dark shard with shields does a lot of armor piercing damage for uh, tier two units. When I say tier one, two, and three, I simply mean this is the building browser, right? You have the tier one main place and you have the tier 2, 3, 4, 5, all right? So these are just tier 2. They're incredibly good. They're one of the best tier 2, well, they're probably the best tier 2 um, ranged unit in the game, probably. God damn it, Dreadhead. Did you die again? God damn it, Dreadhead. And once again, I'm Nerd Fred. I usually stream on twitch.tv slash nerdragefred. Right now we're doing a tutorial stream to try to uh, show new players what to do. So if I'm not reading chats too much, that's it. I'm I'm mostly just answering the questions about about the game right now to keep it relevant. We're doing that for uh, an hour, which is about 30 more minutes. All right, we got that. And now we're just going to do end turn and we're going to go for over there instead. So good morning, everybody, and hope you're all doing fantastic today. Alright, quest issued. Recruits a sorceress and we get the Amber Amulet. The Amber Amulet, once again, incredibly good. You got the Ward Save. Ward Save, as we went through earlier, is the best stats in the entire game. You can have maximum of 85, I think it is. And then it's just capped. You can have, you can say that it has like 100, but um, it, it, it'll, it'll soft cap at like 85. It used to be uh, higher, but they nerfed that because uh, you made some uh, pretty pretty weird stuff with us. You get cash to the Prender from the race. Cash to the Prender from the race. Of, you know, fast your dudes come back and heal up after battle. And regeneration. Regeneration is without the hunger uh, that we had on the armor. Those two coupled together because those are two different effects. If you have two reg regeneration effects, they won't stack. But hunger and regen will. So... With this one, it would be incredible. Then we need a Sorceress. Now, to get a Sorceress, uh, we're going to be needing to be at rank 3 on this place. And for that, we'll need Growth. And as we can see here, for example, we need to get two Population Surpluses. And in five turns, we'll get another per Population Surplus. So we'll have... We just have one right now. Now, we'll actually get additional slaves for the Ancient City and Quintex. Now, this is something that you're going to be seeing a lot in this game, and that is Rebellions. Uh, imminent Rebellion, as it said there. Over here, you have Public Order. When it reaches minus 100, a hostile army will spawn, and they will um, try to either take over the city or just race it to the grounds. Now... Obviously, that's not ideal in any situation, because you kind of want your place, right? 
we're actually going to move a little bit further here as well. We're going to be changing stance. We're going to go with Force March stance. This is something you don't want to do too often when you don't know where the enemy is. Um, can, can kind of also see if the enemy is in, you know, an enemy place by going over their public order. And checking there, you can see military presence. It's just a 1. It's 1 out of 20. So 1 is, um, you know, just one dude, basically. So we don't have to be too scared. Maybe they are coming in from this side. Uh, they have a 60 military presence there, but it's fine. By my desires. So there's always a lot of things to explain. I am trying to not explain uh, everything at the same time. Gonna waste here so we don't use the population surplus to get this one to rank two. We're gonna get this one to rank three in five turns instead. But we will be building a growth place here. There's a lot of things to build, but right now I'm focusing on growth. You can also get special uh, iron mining pits, you can get military uh, places, but we're gonna go on growth so we can actually get everything going faster. And uh, I'm just going to have two minutes break. Don't go anywhere. See you to drugs. I am the first sorceress. All right, back. Um, destroy the following faction, Bleak Holds. I can do this. We even get scrolls for Cardi for this. Now, the entire thing you want to do in the Vortex campaign, which is the one you guess when you purchase Total War Warhammer 2, unless you have Total War Warhammer 1, where you can combine those two into a giant map. And same thing eventually when we guess Chairstrem, best strem. Thanks for them bits, KGC. Um, uh, so when you're doing the Vortex, you kind of want to guess the Scroll to Vicardi. The Scroll to Vicardi is what you use to just do the rituals. You try to fill this one up with Scrolls to Vicardi. You guess a little bit uh, for each. Well, you get like one or two. I think it's like two or three or something like that. Per... Um, City you You guess for requests, for fights, stuff like that. Um, so you just try to fill that one up to do the rituals. Once you guess these, it'll spawn ritual armies against you. We'll see if we manage to do one of those. I am Morathi. Okay, so our K Knight Assassin leveled up. We're gonna grab melee defense for him so as i said earlier i really like melee defense if you can't get ward save ward save is very rare so you don't really get too often that too often but if you have more melee defense the better usually you can have some infantry units as maybe 70 to 80 melee defense and they just don't die essentially i watch from the shadows Okay, so, wow, they uh, actually, like, the Rebellion here has a couple of Marauders, uh, Chaos Warhounds with Poison, and two Hell Cannons. Hell Cannons are, uh, are weird, honestly. They, um, that's pretty cool for, uh, for a Tier 2 place. That, that's a Tier 5 unit. That's, like, the best, one of the best uh, things um, uh, they can have at all, so that's a little bit surprising that they have two of those. It's only eight of them, all in all. So I guess we'll just have to um, 
Gofres. Now, you can also just order solve if you don't want to fight the battle. Now here we can see that it's very much in our favor. The yellow part is us. And the red one is them. But for the sake of showing how to deal with artillery when you don't have artillery, I'll do this one myself. Now, most players will have different kinds of rebellions. We were pretty unlucky with having Hell Cannons. You don't always get this. Um, and as I said, we could have just ordered all that as well when we had the second army to come in and help. But Marathi spreads chaos corruption, and therefore you get chaos rebellions everywhere. If you have very little corruption, it'll just spawn whatever is supposed to be in that place. Uh, which in Ancient City of Quintex will very likely be, you know, chaos anyway. So, as you can see here, over the Harpies, you have this little Vanguard deployment symbol. We'll have them over here. Now, we're actually pretty lucky. I didn't think about this, but this makes total sense. Since we came from the back of the army, the city garrison is on the other side. So we'll actually be able to attack them from the rear pretty quickly here. Once again, we'll just take one of the Dread Spears. We'll have Shift Click on that side. And we select all of them up until them. Uh, well, up to how long you actually want to Shift Click to. You'll just select all those. We right click drag, put them in the front. We will do the same with the dark shards. There we go. And we'll have this one on the side. We'll have Marathi over there. Now, we're facing artillery, right? So artillery usually does explosions and hell cannons definitely so. So we'll just alt and left click drag these dudes a little bit further away from each other. Easy PC, because if they shoot something, we don't want the explosion to take too much stuff. And there we go. Can't even do that, so we align a little bit better, so we can shoot through these gaps as well. And um, we could also actually have the assassin up here, because they also have Vanguard deployments. But it's very likely he'll just be ganged up by, by the doggos and everything, so... Chaos Poisonous Warhands. So we'll just grab them. Control A. And we'll left click drag them up here. Now these dudes are coming in for the flanking attack. We'll try to do while the rest of them move up here. And the Hell Cannons are shooting. As you can see, they can turn a little bit more. So uh, it's not a good idea to be hit by those. Now we also got the garrison, so we'll grab them, shift click, select them. And shift click these dudes behind their right click drag. They're not really moving from the hell cannons. I thought they would maybe try to charge here with their marauders. Uh, but they're not doing anything there. So they're just trying to protect them, which is wise. We'll have the assassin on skirmish mode as well here. We'll take these dudes, and we'll go on the Warhounds. We'll have them go over there, and these guys try to go a little bit on the side. Uh, they'll also go over there, and now we have our front line engaging. Try to have the Hydra come around here, and we'll also take on our number six. We'll just put the Harpies. Obviously, you can have them on any number you want to. It's just, I have like a mouse with a bunch of extra buttons, so I use... One, two, five, and six. It doesn't maybe matter. Maybe you want three or four or something like that. It is control and whatever number you want. There we go. Uh, the heroes are alright. They can tank one of these dudes. Easy PC. This is in Rome too. These are legendary lords. And now we'll actually go in with the Hydra and do our flame attack. These guys are trying to run away over there. We got the flame attack in. And the flame attack even killed off one of these hell cannons. So now we can get the harpies in as well. From the back. Because as we said earlier. They do extra damage from the back. 
And the Harpies are kind of weak, so you want every advantage you want with those. As you can see here, the Chaos Cultists and Mortars ain't doing too hot anymore. And the Garrison is just killing off the things that are trying to run away from the back. And uh, it's all going pretty well right now. They take a couple of losses, but... I mean, that's just life when they have artillery. If we would have order sold, probably we would have had less. Green Vanilla in chat says, Harpists are doing their best, okay? That's true, actually, they are. I shouldn't be too harsh on them. Kind of a mean move. There we go. And as we see here, they also shattered, so they're not coming back. This fight, at least. That's a good coffee right there. Okay. We got their artillery though, so that's not going to come back. They only have their leader and the dogs and, one, and 53 marauders left out of their 585 dudes. So that's alright. I'm just going to enslave them. Enslaving is usually good. Murdering the captives. Getting every... Um, getting like experience. Because it says recruitment rank plus 100. It's not recruitment rank, it's actually just experience for everybody. You don't get like max level... They can only become rank 9 anyway, so you don't get 100, you only get experience. Um, so we don't take that one, because you need a lot more than 100 anyway. Um, I'll That's show you afterwards. Oh, and ransoming, it's just 600, so it doesn't matter at all. We have 5,000 rice. So we're just gonna enslave them once again. Slaves the generate income anyway. As we can see here, on the city, we have about 6% slaves. 259, and that's giving us an increase of 6.5 percentage out of 782, so that's all right. For now, anyway. Now, he ran away. Most armies, if they just attack you, you will have to fight twice to annihilate, otherwise they'll, you know, just run away. The exceptions are if they lose their general, because if the general and lord dies, it'll be replaced next one. Well, next turn, and that'll just kind of reset it. Um, or if they're in Force March stance, like we said earlier here with Force March stance, you move a little bit further, but you will be tired when you're actually there. Um, well, when you're actually fighting, which is really bad. When you're tired, your stats decrease on all of your units. And you kind of don't want that because the fight kind of becomes very unfair very fast, and you can't attack either. And if you do get attacked in Force March Stance while you lose, your army is wiped out and you have to build a new one. So those are the exceptions. There's probably something else that I completely missed out as well. Uh, usually the first army that he fights in every single campaign will just die after the first battle though. Okay, now it's uh, not a lot of them. So we'll just order sold this one. And it shouldn't be any problem at all. Yeah, we didn't lose anyone in that one, so it's all cool. It's gonna enslave them once again. That is what we do. Now, we try to move down to Moonshard. Moonshard has been wiped out. Very likely, as we saw earlier, their public order was very bad, so very likely they also got a Chaos Rebellion, but they did not manage to fight that off like we did. We got a new skill point as well, since we killed a bunch of dudes. And we're very likely just gonna take... Now, every single thing here in the red line will buff different things, right? So you can get melee defense for your... Low tier things. You can use three um, skill line, well, skill points. Get your uh, low tier things better. It's not a bad option, honestly. Once you get the really good stuff, the good stuff can hold its own by itself most of the time. You can also go with, you know, start getting the things that you're gonna get later on, like Slaughter Lord, maybe. Once you get the Witch Elves, Executioners, uh, Black Arts, and Nagarond. Uh, Sister of Slaughter. 
stuff like that, right? Um, but right now I think we're gonna go with magic instead. Cause magic is cool. And we're just gonna keep on filling out this one. So you get elusive and all the melee defense you need. Queen. Pride. But essentially what we want to get is just the first skill point here. To level this one up to so we can actually unlock the rest skill tree. We'll get Soul Blight after that. It's a very good AoE debuff for everybody. And then we try to get Pit of Shades. Pit of Shades is great, honestly. I love Pit of Shades, personally. Uh, you can always right-click on these. Ah, okay, that one didn't work. But you can also always have the Spell Browser here if you want to know what something actually does. Now in the... Uh, and you can see here as well what spell she has. She has Pit of Shades. And that essentially just makes... Well, it actually, lore-wise, it makes a Rift into a dimension full of just a vacuum and just, you know, sucks dudes in there. But in the game, you can just double-click it to make an overcast version, which costs more, and it basically just does a lot of damage on anything. Now, things with a lot of armor will be tough to kill with things without armor piercing. But some spells will have extra armor piercing, and that will help you out quite a bit. Now, it seems like the Moon Shard is just down. We could colonize that one. It will actually take some time to replenish from that one. Because when you colonize something, it takes about... Well, it takes half of the HP of the army, which is a loss. Um, so maybe we actually want to guess another lord for this one. Might just guess... Weapon Master. On one of these lords, so we can actually go and colonize that. It's way more expensive to do it like this. But why not? Let's have a fire supreme sorceress. Now, the supreme sorceress is from a DLC called the Queen and the Crone. So, not everybody will have those. Uh, maybe I'll just take a dread lord instead, just to show off. Uh, the difference here is that these dread lords have either sword and crossbow or sword and shield. I like the sword and shield ones. Well, let's go with a vicious one. Uh, well. No, let's get with the fleet-footed one. Because you also have a loyalty mechanic. With, with the Dark Elves. Uh, so if the loyalty reaches zero, they will rebel. Take their army with them. But well, this one spawned with seven. And the other one would not have gotten that much. So let's go with that instead. Uh, they can't move the first turn. And that's fine. Well, let's try to get some more dudes here. Uh, we are minus 450 per turn though. So maybe we'll just have like... Two more spears, as we can see here. We're not getting a lot of replenishments. The yellow bit here on their HP is... Replenishments. But right now, we'll just shift-click these dudes. And we will actually just merge them. Because it takes too long otherwise. It takes like five, six turns for them to actually be... Replenished, which is just too long. Um, we'll just leave it at that. We'll have 18 dudes, that's fine. Until at least we get this one. Because for every single Lord you guess, you get a higher supply line, which means that everyone costs more money. Beautiful. Everything is more expensive to use. Cruel this is on Legendary. It's the hardest difficulty. So everything is a max price, essentially. If I can do this on Legendary, you shouldn't have any problem to do it on any other difficulty. Well, except for the battles. They can be a little bit hard to... Uh, Learn, you know? And once again... I'm Nerdish Fred, and I usually stream on... Twitch.tv slash Nerdish Fred. We're doing this tutorial guide... For anyone who's thinking about getting the game, or just wanting to learn it. Okay, we got a quest here. If I just capture 5,000 units in Battle Captives, I get the Wound of Karaidon. Which gives me uh, Winds of Magic, more mana... And less cool on all spells, win some magic for Soul Stealer and Bound Spell. Uh, Bound Spell, I want to create as well, which is a cool bombardment spell. Um, also, want they want me to have a non-aggression pack with Sildra Tor, 
another faction, and for that I get 500, 500 skadoodles and four scrolls of Akarti. The ones that I need for the ritual. Now we're gonna try to take Bleak Hole Fortress, because as we can see here, they have no armies there. And the garrison is just ace people for this major city. And we did have a quest to just obliterate them anyway. Just gonna try to move over there. But I think that's all the time we have to do this tutorial. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, we do stream almost every day on twitch.tv slash nerdrichfred. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.